Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to talk about uh, lathe speed and I thank uh, subscriber Banya Rola for suggesting this, this topic. In his fine book on, uh, by Keith Rowley, Wood Turning a Foundation Course, um, he suggests in, in Law 1 that the speed of the lathe must be compatible with the size, weight, and length of wood to be turned. The general rule of thumb is the larger, longer, and, and more unbalanced the wood uh, is, the slower it needs to be. Now, in many instances, there are experienced turners that have a lathe that's belt-driven, that they adjust the lathe by, by pulley, and through, through experience, they've learned which pulley adjustment to use for, for what particular task. Uh, for some individuals with a variable speed lathe, such as the 3520A, uh, that doesn't have a direct readout, uh, it, turners have learned to, to tell by sound and feel uh, and, and vibration what is the comfortable speed for that particular uh, task. They say experience is what you get immediately after you, after you need it. Even a fool can learn, learn from his uh, mistakes, but a wise man learns from others. So I think for a beginner it's a good idea to, to look at some general rule of thumbs and look at some guidance. Uh, most lathe uh, manuals will have some type of chart that you might want to refer to, but there's also this great uh, uh, guideline provided by the late Dale Nish who founded Craft Supply uh, in, in Utah. He explains, as shown on this screen, that the safe speed is equal to the diameter in inches times the revolutions per minute, and that result should fall between 6,000 and 9,000. That's not 6,000, 9,000 RPMs. That's just a number that's calculated. Uh, this is a surface speed of 18 to 27 miles per hour. If we convert this, in, and here's the formula for that calculating that speed. It's miles per hour is, e is equal to the circumference in feet times the revolutions per minute times 60 divided by 5,280 feet per, for, uh, per mile. For metric users, this translates to a safe speed is equal to the diameter in centimeters times RPM and should fall and, sh and will give you a safe result if it falls between 15,000 and 22,500. That's a surface speed of 29 to 43 kilometers per hour. Now, slower speeds, uh, I'm going to show you some uh, video clips from previous videos that I've made to to focus in on some of the specific details. For example, when starting out turning and learning uh, on your lathe, uh, you might feel more comfortable with a lower speed as, as we're turning here with my granddaughter, uh, Pepper. When you're turning larger or unbalanced pieces of, of wood, such as burls, especially those with, with bark inclusions or voids, um, you need to turn, turn slower. If you use a vacuum chuck, you probably want to turn somewhere between uh, maybe 600 to no faster than 800 revolutions per minute. And you need to slow down with longer pieces of wood. Think about the leverage uh, as illustrated here with a, a hammer. The further you get out on a piece, the more leverage you're going to put. So you need to slow down. You also need to slow down when sanding. If you, if you sand too fast, you'll heat up the surface of the work. Your sandpaper will have a tendency to skip over uh, uh, the low, low points and, and miss those. And the heat uh, damages the uh, sandpaper and, it, and it, by overheating the surface you can cause uh, checks. This is especially true on exotic woods um, on, on end grain. And checks are those tiny little minute cracks that you get from, from overheating the wood. Now, be aware when you're shopping for a lathe that some mini lathes and, and maybe some larger lathes, the slowest speed may be uh, as fast as 850. So uh, that's really too fast for, for rough turning a bowl. So if you've got a lathe with a slowest speed of about 850, then you're going to have to make sure that you've got a well-balanced blank uh, through band sawing or chain sawing carefully before you even mount it on the lathe. You turn faster when you're doing small spindle work, including pin turning. We're going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. This is just normal spindle work. You can usually go faster uh, and turn the volume up when you're doing finishing cuts on, on smaller items that are well balanced. 
And going faster is certainly safer when you've got tailstock support. Now there are special uh, turning tasks uh, that call for either faster or slower uh, speeds that might not fall within Dale Nash's rule. For example, we let's look at hollowing a box. I'm at about 1200, so we're going to come in, anchor the bevel. Here's an example of thread chasing where we uh, typically hand thread chase between 200 and 400 RPM. And then there's chattering where you turn between 1200 and 2800. And I'm at almost 2000, pressing it in. And texturing. Texturing generally calls for a speed, regardless of what texturing tool, is somewhere between 400 and, and 700. Now if you're using a threading jig and you're mounting a rotary cutter on the lathe, you're going to turn uh, very fast, somewhere around 2500 uh, RPM. Another example of where you want to go a little bit slower, uh, less than a thousand, but it will vary based on, is, is when you're drilling and the speed will vary based on the size of the drill bit and, and the clip I'm here it's it's a one inch drill bit but if you're using a large Forstner bit you're going to have to certainly go less uh, slower than a than thousand RPM. Okay let's talk about kinetic and potential energy. An object in motion possesses its energy of movement which is equivalent to the work that would be required to bring it to rest. This is called its kinetic energy and it's dependent on the square of the objects velocity, v, as one half of its mass, and mathematically this is expressed as e parentheses k is equal to one half of the mass times the velocity squared. Okay, what does that mean? It means getting hit in the face with this uh, small half ounce top is, is not going to have a, a necessarily a, a disastrous consequence, but if you get hit in the face with this four pound rough turned bowl, 13 inch bowl, it's going to have 128 times the force. I've seen an accident described as, a, as an undesired transfer of energy. In this short clip we're going to see that, untrans that undesired transfer of energy as half the platter uh, flies up and shatters the fluorescent light overhead. There have been a number of wood turners in, in, in recent years that have been severely injured and even killed from wood turning and sometimes that's been a result of a, uh, a faulty uh, tenon, uh, possibly using punky wood. It could be a crack or a void in, in the wood. But in many instances that problem is made, uh, is made worse by the speed uh, at, at which they were, they were turning. So my suggestions are Always examine your work very carefully before you turn to look for cracks, voids, uh, uh, punkiness. As shown in this video clip, stay out of the line of fire when you're, when you're turning on the lathe and as often as possible. Start slow and then speed up as needed. Use tailstock support as long as possible as shown in this, this video clip. And always remember the cardinal rule of wood turning, never get blood on the wood. Keep it safe. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider subscribing.